Okay, my name is Clark Cheech Pierce, and I'm going to be tying the Petite Sirloin Stonefly today. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, be using a preformed extended body that's made by Rainey's. It's called the X Flies Tube Bodies, and uh, the body that I have is uh, it's called uh, Orange Stone, and it's the, the medium size for hook sizes two to four. Um, so I'll be tying on a size 2 hook today. To start out, you take this body and I like to pretty much cut off about a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch of it. They're just a little bit too long. Um, so once I've gotten rid of that, I'm going to take the, the body and I'm going to thread the hook onto the body just a short ways and uh, so it should end up like this. All right, so I'm going to seat the hook in the vise. Um, and with a thread color on this, it doesn't really matter much. I either just use a dark thread or a, a, an orange thread. Um, right now I'm using a, a Uni 6 aught thread. And I'm just going to start the, the thread right in the middle of the hook. And uh, just break my thread off. Um, I like to lay down a little bit of dubbing underneath this body so that the body sits on top of something so the body doesn't twist around. If this body twists, it's, it's slightly tapered and so it'll make your fly ride funny. So I'm just going to take some dubbing and I'm going to wrap it in the middle of the hook about like that. Now to make this stay, to make this stay I have some super glue and I'm just going to saturate this uh, dubbing with super glue and after I've done that I'm going to take the body and just slide it up on top of the dubbing bump. From there I'm going to take my thread and really snugly um, tie in this extended body and if this is done properly the body won't twist on the hook it will stay fairly solid. Okay, now for the wing. Uh, for, the, for the wing on this fly, there are two elements to it. The first part is putting some deer hair and then on top of the deer hair I put some CDC. And the CDC is mostly uh, for, flo or not for flotation, but for a little bit of movement in the wings. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to get a little bit of deer hair. About a, a pencil sized clump is good on this. It's really important, as always, when working with deer hair to remove the under fluff and any of the shorter hairs that will prevent you from aligning the tips. So once we have those tips aligned, I'm going to take the, the hair out. And when I place this on the fly, it should the hair should be about as long as the body. Not where the biots are, but where the body ends. So I'm just going to set this hair on here. Make one loose wrap, two loose wraps, and then I'm going to advance the thread forward a little bit and make some really loose wraps in front of it. And the reason I do that is so that when you cinch the hair down, the front hair doesn't um, flare all out. You can come back and trim this very easily without the hair going everywhere. So I'm going to go back to my original tie-in point and really start putting some pressure on it. And you see how this hair stays nice and straight instead of flaring. So once I get several wraps on that, I'll let go of my hair and I will trim that. It's okay if you trim it just straight off. Get rid of any of, a, of the other unwanted hairs. And then secure, wrap to secure the butts. All right, that wing's in there. Now, this pattern represents kind of a fluttering stonefly. And, sto and so it's really important that it has a fairly wide profile. And so I'm going to split this, this wing into two uniform wings. And to do that, 
<clears throat> I'm going to take the fly and I'm going to rub my finger back and forth until the two wings are separated and I'm just going to grab one wing, grab the other, and split them. So it should look like this. Um, once the wings are split, they're not going to stay that way forever and so you have to add some figure eight wraps of dubbing. <clears throat> and on this fly, really the dubbing doesn't even matter um, what color or style because it's not going to show in the fly. It's strictly to hold the hair. So, consequently I do have some dubbing that matches the fly, so I guess it could show. I will just do two figure eight wraps on one side, two more on the other side, and just kind of finish it off. So, top view should look about like that. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to pull the, the wings back a little bit and make some more wraps on top of the dubbing that I just did and it's time to tie in the CDC. Um, I have full CDC feathers and I'm going to use a, a full feather per wing. So I'll take this CDC, kind of preen it forward a little bit, put it on top of the deer hair wing and just tie that in, one per side. And it's okay if it looks a little buggy or messy at this point. That's the purpose of the CDC is to provide a little bit of movement. All right, so we have that tied in. We have pretty much bare hook shank in front of the, the fly. Um, now we're going to do a bullet head on this pattern. And to do a bullet head with just normal six aught thread, you're probably going to break your thread quite a bit. So I'm going to quickly whip finish this and cut it off and reattach GSP thread. <clears throat> so I have that on there to pull it pretty tight to get it to cut. Okay. All right, so I'm ready to, to put my bullet head on this. Now, when doing a bullet head on a huge fly like this, it takes a lot of deer hair. And so this is just, uh, it's actually bass bug deer hair. It, it works really, really well for bullet heads. And I'm going to take a clump that's probably four times bigger than the first clump that I, I took out. All right, so that's the clump of hair that I have. Um, and it's got a lot of under fluff as well. So I'm going to take this by the tips and I will lightly comb out the, the under fluff from this as well. Make sure you clean up after yourself. My wife wants to shoot me every time I tie these flies. Just throw it down there. Okay, so all the, all the fluff is out of that pretty much. And I use this big, huge hair stacker. Um, it'd be hard to stack this much hair in a smaller diameter one. So I have the, the extremely large hair stacker. Give it a little stack. Now it's important, our tips are going to be facing toward the front of the fly. And so it's important that when I pull the hair out of this stacker, that I point the tips the way that I want them to face. So I'll point them that way, pull it out, tips are nice and even. I'll take the tips out, and now I have the hair ready to tie in. Um, <clears throat> the length of the hair that I'm going to tie in, the amount that I want facing off the eye of the hook, is approximately equal to the length of the whole body of the fly. So I'm going to measure that really quickly and then I'll just place that. I'm going to do a, a pinch technique where I have the hair pinched in my hand and I'm going to put my fingers on top of the hook. I'm going to bring the thread up between my fingers and then down on the other side with a really loose wrap one more time and then I'm going to pull down on my GSP thread and it flares it really nicely. 
then two or three wraps forward toward the eye of the hook and then wrap back to the original tie-in point. And what that does is it distributes the hair around to the bottom of the hook but it, le it, it leaves the, the hair a little bit thicker on top of the hook as opposed to the bottom. So I'm going to trim the butts off now. And then uh, just a couple more wraps over the butts. And it's okay if this hair spins a little bit, just, just get it back to the original position. Okay, now we have the fly that's pretty much ready to, to tie our bullet head, but we have a huge gap in between the fly, um, or the, the head and the body. And if, if our bullet head tie down slips down into that, it will ruin our bullet head. And so what I'm gonna do is I, I'm just going to fill that with a little bit of dubbing. And again, it doesn't matter what kind of dubbing you use on this just as long as it fills that gap. I'm going to take this and just fill that gap up and then advance your thread to the base of the wings of the fly. So here we are. As you can see with our camera, I don't know if that works for you. Um, as you can see, uh, the hair is perfectly in a circle around the, the eye of the hook and it's now prepped for the bullet head. A little bit thicker up here, a little more thin down here. We're actually going to trim the bottom of the fly so that works out just, just right. So I'm going to just take the, uh, take the hair and pull it back. It might take a couple tries before you get it right. some stragglers here. That's okay, we'll trim those up. And with the GSP you'll be able to pull down tight and get the, the look of the bullet head that you're looking for. Now if you have any of these little hairs that didn't quite get stacked well, just trim those out. All right, so here we have a nearly completed fly. We need to put legs on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a quick whip finish on this head and cut off the GSP thread. And then I'm gonna reattach my 6 aught. The main reason I do that is just because the GSP is white. I want to cover that up. And now on the bottom of the fly, I'm going to cut the, the tips of the deer hair so that we can see the body through that. So I'm just going to cut that. Then from this, at this point, I'm going to take some Spanflex type material. This is actually, um, I think it's called Legs Alive. It's, come, it's from Fly Tires Dungeon. And I'm going to take anywhere from three to four of these strands and uh, cut them off. I want to find some long ones because sometimes they're not always uniform. Okay. I'll cut those off and I attach my rubber legs in, in kind of a unique way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, the strands on the far side of my fly, make just a couple of wraps and then loop the, the rubber legs around the front of the fly and wrap on the other side. The reason I do that is because it's just one strand of materials and I can just cut this loop now and it will make the rubber legs that I'm looking for. 
pull to adjust length if you want. Um, the only thing left other than coloring the legs is to uh, put a little strike indicator on it. This fly does ride low after a couple hours of fishing it, so a little strike indicator won't hurt anything. And this is just two millimeter foam. Instead of whip finishing this because they're rubber legs, um, I just dabbed a little bit of super glue right on the strike indicator and I'm going to bring my thread right through the, the, the indicator and I'll be able to trim that now and the, the thread will stay in the, in the super glue. All right, um, so I'm just going to trim the legs now and so as you can see, these legs don't match the fly at all. Um, and you can buy centipede legs. They have uh, the bar marks already on them. But uh, the problem with that is those, those centipede legs, the, the bars sometimes wash off. And so I like to make my own custom colors. Um, and I just do it with Sharpie. Um, and the Sharpie on this Spanflex type material really stays well. So I'm going to use a one brown and one orange marker and I hold them in my hand at the same time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the legs tight and I'm going to use one marker at a time and it doesn't matter if you're fairly sloppy when you're doing this because when you release the legs it's, a, it's going to compact all the color down into a a smaller band. It's kind of like when you like draw a smiley face on a balloon and then you pop the balloon it just makes a smaller smiley face alright so not the neatest right now but when I release that it compacts the color down and makes kind of more more neat bands I'm gonna do that again on the other side Like one of these doesn't want to cooperate. Just pull it a little longer. So there we have our colored legs. I'm going to come in with, with some scissors and I like to cut the legs fairly long. Um, I know it doesn't look natural at all, but the fish like the movement. Okay, so there's the finished fly. Um, the last thing I do to this fly is I put a lot of head cement right on the head. Um, there's a lot of pressure on this bullet head because I put so much deer hair in it and if you catch one fish on this fly it's gonna pretty much fall apart if you don't do this because the deer hair will just explode so I'm just using Sally Hansen's hard as nails um, I've used pretty much every head cement on this and it works pretty well except for the water-based stuff alright so there we have a, a petite sirloin stone fly um, it is a Rainey's pattern um, in their catalog right now and uh, these uh, extended bodies come in a lot of different colors and sizes. All right.